Hello everyone, welcome on in. Tonight we are going to be playing the amazing game Disco Elysium, which I've heard lots of really good things about. Uh, never played it before myself, so kind of going into this mostly blind, which is going to be exciting. So, uh, without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump in. Thinker. Extremely intelligent, bad with people, knows the interesting fact, comes up with original ideas. Sensitive, psychological, immune to personality, but unstable. Might begin to lose his mind. Physical, extremely physical, and directs the world through his body. Gets stuff done, but dumb as a rock. Hmm. Where are you doing your own? I'm gonna go with Finger, that sounds fun. There is nothing, only warm primordial blackness. Your conscious ferments in it, no larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Ever. Never. Ever. Never, ever, ever, baby. An inordinate amount of time passes. It is utterly void of struggle. No ex-wives are contained within it. An awareness creeps up on you. A mass lies hidden in your dead angle. Soaking in some lurid acidic source, it's bloated and shameful. A ball of meat surrounding you. This is a terrible line of questioning, and it will only lead to more awareness of the meat. Ex love, ex tenderness. It is foolish of you to resurface to the loss. Not after all the damage you've suffered to get here. Some of it irreversible. Stay, sail with me through the abyss of allergic zone. This is fascinating. I want to get off now. I like pain and burning light and wanting things for people who don't want to give them to me. Alonzi, never let me go. <laughs> it's a difficult choice. Do you really? Of course not. All right. Nothing town to fuck all borough. you. Your days of giving a shit and being that type of animal were over. The song of death is sweet and endless. But what is this? Somewhere in the soul bloated man meet around it's you fascinating i don't know what i've done a sensation like a fly to the ointment your conscious sticks to it the limbed and headed machine of pain and undignified suffering is firing up again it wants to walk the desert hurting longing <laughs> Dancing to disco music. Mother, help me. There's a head attached to my neck, and I'm the in it. The stench of liquor rises from your mouth, and with it, an ungodly headache. Limbic system. 
This is fascinating. A fiery streak penetrates your skull, trying to force your eyes open. It's a sound. A clarion call from hell. Somehow, you know what it is. A Kupri's command on the motor carrier. What? What on earth is going on? Magnum size bottle of old Comdor Red is empty. <laughs> Turn up the tape while the sun was playing. Let's be able to play a song. Rolling empty. Ooh, that's nifty. It's a shoe. Left foot. Beer and sweet liqueurs. You hear a jingle. Keys are clinking in the pocket of your flare cut pants. It says whirling in rags on the aluminium key ring. There is a single key on the ring. The number one is etched on it. It should open the door. The whirling in rags is a hostel cafeteria on the urban coast, frequented by dock workers. Interesting. window stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. What do you mean? Assess the damage. How would you do that? What are you even trying to do? The morning light hurts your eyes. It's hazy, but you see the ocean and some war-torn buildings. This fan has two chain pull switches. One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades. The blades come squeaking to a halt. It should be easier to reach the tie now. You swoop up and catch the tie. Snap, it's released from the blade. Savoir fair. What you have in your hand is a truly hideous necktie with four or five different patterns. The knot reminds you of a noose. 
interesting what else can we touch oh there's things there is other things Interesting. A mirror hangs above a bent and broken sink. In a fierce discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. Oh, jeez. Was this not the same Elo that founds empires and lays waste to cities, virile, uncaring towards the little things? Elon? Probably not, no. Hot water sprays from the faucet's base and steam covers the mirror. You cannot see yourself, just the vague impression of a man. Suddenly, you realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there, underneath the soft vapor. Really, all recollection of the person you are, the people in your life, and even the world you're in, has drowned in a sea of blood alcohol. This was no mere night of drinking. It was a deluge of world-ended proportions. As you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror. Abort. You clearly have not thought this through. You won't like what you see there, and you will never unbecome it. Yeah. There is definitely something wrong with it. Where to even begin? There is the bloatedness, then the swollenness. It's like there's an upholstery of alcohol underneath your skin. It's not. It's swollen and snail-like, wriggling between your fingers. Bet you are. Your nose feels like a small balloon in the middle of your face. It hurts when you honk it. It doesn't appear to be a particularly tiny nose either. Not with all the drinks it's absorbed for you. Don't be scared. It's only your face. It's not like anyone's going to see it. Behold. <laughs> well then. You have no idea who this thing is, do you? Stage of late, stage of Too late. late. You clearly have rigor mortis on your face. Oh wait, is that an expression? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? Why? Please stop. It's horrible. You're scaring yourself. Oh my God. You can't stop. It's like it's not even voluntary anymore. You have worn that grin into your face and now it won't come off. Jeez. What does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey? It's an expression of you pain. You are correct. It's an expression of pain. Dig deep into my locate the source of the expression. Attempt to stop the expression from happening. It belongs in the new, the third decade of the current century. Enough time had passed from the failure of the revolution that, for a fleeting moment, free market economy seemed like the ultimate, uncontested way of life for our species. Okay. Things were good. It was smooth sailing. People made gold and champagne-tinted interiors and facades to suit the times, calling this the new style, but more importantly, disco happened. For Revachol, your city, that meant only one thing. Guillaume La Million. If it doesn't rhyme, you're not pronouncing it right. Drama. Guillaume La Million. I'm 
Interesting. Out of the dazzling swirl of disco music, in an open air, Boite de Nuit, somewhere Fuck in Revachol West, Guillaume's blonde mane appeared on the screen. He sang some bullshit. Then he made the expression. So I adopted it, why? Everyone loved it. Maybe you thought some of the stardust would rub off on you. Hmm. Maybe it did. Either way, it's all gone now. Only the grimace remains. <laughs> you have some understanding of the near history of disco. The rest <laughs> is darkness. Aside from the useless fact that the motor carriage outside was a Caprice Canema. The click is used to spur on a horse. It also features heavily in Guillaume Le Million's regional mega hit, Don't Worry, Your Pretty Little Head. Some 20 odd years, there is a vast ocean of time between right now and the expression, looking good on you <laughs> or anyone. Humanity has run aground in that time. It's a different world now. The expression is a relic. It doesn't have to be. You can swoon over Guillaume and his champagne cork smile whenever you want to. Maybe some of the stardust will return. It's too late. Like an image on film. The expression belongs to your <laughs> primary motor cortex. It would take a minor neurological miracle for you to cease producing it. Well then. That was the whole thing. Head in the clouds and having Gail the moon who with amp remains sparking teeth. Beguile the tattered remains of the nation. This is fascinating. I have no idea what's going on. The fan stands still. A terrible mistake. Turn the lights off immediately. You can practically feel the photons burning a hole in your brain. Your eyes burn with photosensitivity. It's not good. The lights are off again. Well then. The window stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. The shards face outward. Whatever broke this window came from the inside. A fine web of scarring covers the back of your right hand, but none of it is recent. More likely a projectile than a held object. There are no fragments on the floor from pulling a tool back in after impact. It is too large for a bullet, yet too small for a piece of furniture. You're looking for something heavy and larger than your fist. The single green shoe you found fits the hole almost as well as your foot. Ha -ha, it foot would have outside. also been heavy enough if thrown with force. Congratulations. You smashed the window with your own shoe. Now you only have one. If you're lucky, you could is. still find the other one on the balcony outside. The door to it should be outside your room. Excuse me. The cool wind gushes in. Your toes curl up from the cold. Captain Green says he shoes must have its partner. You should find it for your adventure. The wild unknown to choose better than none. And t unite them again. 
This is bizarre and fascinating. Officer. The young woman raises a cigarette to her lips. This orange disco dancer. Her eyes are brown and her face is speckled with birthmarks. She can't be more than 28. A silver jumpsuit falls off her like scale armor, sparkling. This is the sparkle of too many nights out on the city. Uh, no. Because you're a police officer, sir. I am, yes. Unless you've been feeding us a set of very well-rehearsed lies all this time. You've been here for three days. On official police business, no less. Couldn't say. In truth, so far, mostly drinking. You have no doubt about the drinking. But do you strike yourself as a tight-lipped drunk? She must have heard something. No, that's a terrible idea. She nods. There's a mercenary out back. He's been hanged. The what body happened? has been there for a week now. The locals probably got tired of it and called the cops. I didn't mean to overwhelm you with information. You seem a bit lost, officer. Could it be because of the drinking? She hasn't had time to put her makeup on. This is her morning cigarette. She looks tired. Her beauty waning faster than it ought to at her age. Of course. Be careful, officer. They don't like the police around here. Something stirs in you as she's about to go. Call it an instinct, a need. The need to ask questions. It's like you said the words a million times before. She looks back at you. A light glinting off her eyes. Yes. There was the usual ruckus. Loud disco music. I couldn't say. It's impossible to hear people speaking from over here. Oh, yes. Various artists. Ostentatious orchestration prime among them. Oh, that. Yeah. Whoa. The less said about OO, the better. OO were huge where I come from. I was very young then, of course. Like, seven. Life gets hard, but we go on. It would appear so. At around two o'clock, the disco stopped and there was a change of pace. A slow, sad song started playing, like organ music on repeat. That went on for quite a while. Some of the time, you were yelling along to it. Yes, there was a church in there, a really small church. Like the smallest, saddest church in the whole world. It was about that. And also, that it doesn't matter anymore and that we're alone now. It was difficult to tell. The song itself was very quiet and soft, but you sounded like a winded boar, sir. It was hard to understand what you were singing on top of it. Then you started screaming and trashed the place. 
No. It didn't sound like there was a fight. It sounded like someone was trashing their room. A window was smashed. A tape player, probably. The song stopped. And furniture, too. A real destructathon. There was screaming. Then I think uh, you passed out. There was. I think you screamed that you didn't want to be this type of animal anymore. I may have misheard, but it was sort of memorable. Jeez. I went out afterwards. Everything was quiet by then. Around four or five. And that was it. You're in a hostel, sir. We are in Revachol. Revachol is the disgraced former capital of the world, divided into zones of control under foreign occupation. Half a century after a failed world revolution, she is central to our moment in time. Yeah. It's 51. The current century? Centuries don't have numbers. They have names. And this is the current one. Civilization has existed for 8,000 years, sir. You're right. There is nothing funny about civilization. The dock workers are pretty cocky. They think they're police enough. At least here on the coast. I can't say about the rest of the city. Glad to have been of assistance. Well then, that was wildly entertaining. of information out there actually. These games editions tearful trump them all. I'm not gonna get the stairs. Oh that's right, I can't. There they both are, two identical shoes, both copiously green and indiscriminately snakeskin, reunited on your feet, like two baby crocodiles. It's pretty clear a normal cop is not what you are. Good, they're balanced, comfy, feels like the only good thing about you right now, truth be told. See, makes you dizzy. Ooh, I can zoom in and out. That's fancy. His late twenties stands behind the counter, inspecting a stuffed seabird. As you approach, 
He gives you a sideways glance, then looks down again. Everything is cool between you and this guy. He's a big fan. Make some small talk. A competent work of taxidermy, the white and brown seabird lies among piles of coasters and drying mugs, one of its wings broken. The man is trying to mend it. Looks like the bird was ripped off the shield that was used to mount it, most likely on a wall. This is the great skua. The seabird is the symbol for the discovery of the Insulindian Isola, the part of the world you are in right now. The small steel tag says as much. The great skua. Stercoarius skua. Look, your buddy is over there. Why don't you go and talk to him, okay? He pretends not to hear you, concentrating on the bird instead. Well, he's doesn't really very happy with me. Zoologist's wife. You shouldn't keep your colleague waiting. A bespeckled man in an orange bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Looks like he's waiting for someone. You. As you approach, he narrows his eyes and extends his hand in greeting. On the sleeve of his bomber jacket, as well as on its back, are the same enigmatic white rectangles as on your blazer. Hello, I'm Kim Kitsuragi, Lieutenant, Prison 57. You must be from the 41st. You realize he's waiting for your name. It looks like we had a little scheduling error on Sunday. Saturday too, actually. Have you had time to talk to the manager here? What he means is, he has been trying to meet up with you for two days, but you have been otherwise occupied. If you don't mind, we should talk to him again. Ask him for a rundown of the area. Now that I'm here as well. I understand the scene is out back, right? It also wouldn't hurt to assure him the police are finally here. In full force, I mean. Have you mapped out the initial interviews? Yeah, okay, that's... we'll have time for that after we take a look at the coroner's case. Have you removed the dead body from the tree? No. So, the body is still in the tree. Where it has been hanging for seven days straight. We should go there as soon as we are done talking to the owner. After you, officer. If you're about to embark on an investigation, shouldn't you have a badge? You mean you don't have a badge? Losing your identification card is a serious matter. My vehicle has a shortwave. You can use it to report your badge missing. I advise you to try to locate it as quickly as possible. But getting the body down should still take precedence. Lieutenant Kitsuragi is now in your party. You can talk to him whenever by interacting with him. Cool. Let's talk to the manager then. The man with the unimpressive beard notices you approaching. 
He drops the ledger he was holding and turns to the lieutenant. Mr. Garth, right? Yes. I am Kim Kitsuragi from Prison 57. This is an inter-district investigation. So joining me from Prison 41... Right. Now, I know it took <laughs> us a while to arrive at the scene. It also took you a while to call us and report a dead body. It was you who placed the call, yes? No, I only just got here. It was probably Sylvie who called you. She usually works the bar here. I'm only temporarily taking over her duties. Do you have her number? As a matter of fact, I do. The power of coasters, intense pain. This sounds like something we can use to call this Sylvie later. You said you just got here. From where? Are you a local? What, of Martinez? No, I live in Jamrock. I only sometimes come here to keep an eye on the place. This is just one of the many, many cafeterias I manage. But you still know your way around, yes? In case we need directions. Yes, I know where some things are, but as I said, I don't live here. I just used to work here. And I'm not going to start working here again, if that's what you think. I didn't imply that. Detective. He probably means this is where you step in and ask your questions. His face expresses profound doubt in your having this. Ask him about the body's location before asking if he killed him. People give up information in the more innocuous question, which you can later use in the more sinister ones, not vice versa. Behind this building, there's a courtyard. They hoisted him up on a tree there. That's easy. See that door there? First you exit through that. Then to your right, you should see a big hole in the fence, a really big one. You can get to the courtyard through there. No need for the keys. The hole is big enough for the Franco-Nigerian cavalry to fit through. Franco-Nigerian? This man means the heavy cavalry of the innocent Franco-Negro, sweeping over the plains and nations of the enemies of mankind. Fifth century style. Unified currency and the concept of cool came in their wake. They wore lamella and carried guns. But first and foremost, Franco-Nigerian heavy cavalry was really, really wide. That hole in the fence must be enormous. She went away because none of your business. Have they not been telling you you're a cop? Okay, you got me. She went away because of the dead body out back. And because I asked for her number. That's why Sylvie went away. I hope you appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> I asked an employee out. She didn't want to come, but felt obliged to. It was a bad idea. Now, what is so goddamn fascinating about that for you? It's got nothing to do with the lynching. Never get something good out of it. It's not like to be thorough. Good for you. Uh, was there something else? I'd like to get back to what I was doing. I don't know who killed him. I'm not the police. That's your job. This is it. He said they hoisted him up on a tree. Who is this they if he doesn't know? Uh, oh. People are saying it was the Union dock workers, that it was a lynching. The locals, the customers, the people who eat here, a lot of dock workers eat here. Sylvie told me everyone knows the dock workers did it. Did the debarders themselves tell her this, or is it a rumor? I don't really know. You'll have to ask her. Interesting. I would suppose it's because they have nothing better to do. You mean the strike? Yes, the strike. The man they hanged was a security guard for the harbor company, I hear. 
A mercenary. Ooh. The Unionistas probably thought they'd send a message. The lieutenant turns the page in the little notebook he's been scribbling in. Let's go. Not so fast. You owe me 130 real. It's real. Oh, excuse me. You owe me 130 real. The IIR, or Interisolary Real, is the global reserve currency. Whatever part of the world you're in right now, it's safe to assume he means you owe him some money. Wow, you're a genius. Yes, that's right, money. You owe this establishment 130 real. Let's see. Three nights at a tariff of 20 real comes to 60 real. Then there's the window you annihilated. The hole in the window was the first thing I saw when I came to work. So don't try to tell me you didn't. That will be 40 real in damages. Another thing you've annihilated is half the bar. You've run a tab of 30 real. Actually, more, but we'll round it down to 30 for your hard work maintaining the stability and order of Revachol. That's 60 plus 40 plus 30 equals 130 real. And yes, real is still money. What are you, a philosopher? Money is what grown-up people use to pay for things. Things like this hostel room, or, or eight bottles of potent blend, and nine packs of royal extra. We use it for everything, really. There's a shuffle of nylon as Lieutenant Kitsuragi looks for something in the pockets of his orange bomber. I'm sorry, but he has to pay. I can't let him stay here any longer if he doesn't. If he doesn't have the money by tonight, then... Officer, maybe you are better off working this from home for now. You live in Jamrock, right? It's not that far away. I'm sorry I couldn't help more. You should take this up with your station. I have a shortwave radio in my car, okay? We have to get this investigation started now. Good luck. Pay for damages. He wants to say something he thinks better of it. Dress is coming up blank, and this place sure isn't it. But you've been at this hostel cafeteria for only three nights. Where were you before? You had to be somewhere. Nowhere. Why did you say that? The steps is firing, doesn't mean anything. He wants to see meaning. The old thesaurus comes up empty. Maybe you should ask the lieutenant. No. But isn't that an expression, not a place? A saying, up on Marvel Hill, a great high place, one that is impossible to climb back to. That uh. doesn't sound like somewhere you can stay if you run out of money. <laughs> you can try. Run some addresses in your head when you get the time. Maybe a street or an apartment will appear. More brain. This is to the west, which is not here, I presume. 